Hello guys, today let's continue the topic of multi-language in Laravel and this is part 2 video. For those who haven't seen part 1, the link will be in the description below. So in that part 1 we talked about static translations in resources lang and today we're talking about models translations, so database translations for dynamic data. And I will show you two approaches, one old school approach which is not that bad as people say and then I will show you two different packages with another approach. And we will measure the performance practically as I always do in these videos. So imagine you have a database where you have posts in a few languages, for example, English and Spanish. And let's start with a practical approach with old approach, which means every record in the database has a few columns related to the same language. So title English, full text English, title Spanish, full text Spanish. And then if there are more languages, more fields in the database. And I have read over the years that this approach is bad and not flexible enough for two reasons. First reason, if you need to add another language, then you need to change the database schema, database structure. And second reason, that this database table becomes too big, too heavy, and you may bump into performance issues with this table. But let's try it out. So I have created this demo project and this time I will put it on GitHub so you will learn something by just looking at the code because it's a bigger project than just a few lines of code. So how it works, it's a list of posts. You can create a post with a form which contains all the fields and then you can change the language to do Spanish or English which changes the language here. So for example, on the dashboard, the list of posts, if you change that to Spanish, this changes. If you change it back to English, from URL, this changes to English texts. It's not really English or Spanish because it's fake data, but you get the idea. So let's see how it works and let's discuss is it that bad to have it all in one posts table. So while looking at the list of posts we have for each of the posts and how we view those things is title underscore or full text underscore with locale which is set in the middleware. So in file app HTTP kernel for every file on the web for every web request there's a set locale class middleware and what it does it checks by default language is English but if there is a request language in the URL then we set that to that language and then put that into session otherwise if there is no language in the URL we get that from the session so don't change anything and we set that locale for whatever file that comes next after this middleware. So then when we do in home controller get the post, so get latest post in the home blade, all we need to do is use that locale. And to change the locale here on the top, we just do in the navigation blade, I have a for each of available locales, which is in the config app, I've created a separate array of available locales. So for each of the locales, I link to the same URL which is present with just language parameter. And then if current locale is the same as for each active record, I do the border for underlying language. So EN in this case, or ES in this case. So pretty simple, right? And then to manage those posts, there's a separate route, resource route, which is only two methods in my case, for post controller, which is just post create with post create request validated. In the request, we validate all the fields. So English texts are required and Spanish is just string. And in post create, we have title full text and title full text, so four fields. And now let's try to solve a challenge with this method is what happens if you need to add a third language. So what are the steps for that? First, we need to add the columns to the database. So PHP Artisan, make migration, add German language to post stable, for example, like this. So we have that migration. If we open it, add German language, we need to add table string title DE nullable and duplicate that to full text DE text like this. Let's run the migration and see if it works. It works. Then we need to add those as fillable fields. That is also something that we cannot really avoid. Post PHP with fillable, you need to add two more fields here, DE, right? But then you would think that you need to change a lot of things in a lot of places as well. But is it not configurable? So for example, in the store post request, it seems that it's a static text and we need to do it this way. But not necessarily, we can do it rules equals this and then for each of config 
app available locales as locale. Then we return the rules. And we can add to the rules, rules, title, locale, equals string, and full text, equals string. So we will refactor all the pieces of the application to be flexible, to get all the locales from the config and not hard code it in the code. So after adding fourth language, all we would need to do is add those fields in the database and into the model as fillable. And even fillables, actually, if your fillables are dynamic, it's probably better to use guarded instead. So what do you protect from being fillable, which is usually ID or even nothing. But in this case, guarded ID, and then you don't need to change anything here for new languages. Let's try it out if we didn't break anything. Add new post, use fake filler, save the post. And there is a fifth post with correct data. If we refresh the database, yep, it all exists with all languages, all good. Now we don't have German in the form yet, right? So in create blade, for now we have hard coded fields. Why don't we do the same thing here? So for each in the blade config, and config is available in all the application in the blade, in the controller. So app available locales as locale then we need two fields for each locale, right? And for each. And then let's transform those blade components into a simple label. So we will actually visually see label for title locale like this. And then title also locale, but start to upper locale like this. I think it does the same job as that label component from Laravel Breeze. And same here, let's have not x input, but input type text name title locale ID locale here as well. Value old title locale, but not even that we do old like this locale here. And that's it. Okay, so for input, we did the refactoring for a label here. It's the same thing, copy and paste, just full text. So full text locale and full text here. And text area is not a blade component. So we need to just copy and paste EN, EN here, class and old full EN here locale without blade brackets. And I think we're good. Let's delete all the old tables, old fields, sorry, and refresh our form. We've missed some styling, we can do actually MT4 on the label class margin top four. So title ES should be a bit lower. Okay. And we lost the rounded style, but we can copy that I used it on text area. We can copy the class from here into input text. So class like this and refresh and we have great styling. Now let's see if it actually works. Save post and we have six posts. Cool. Now, how do we add German here? All we need to do is to go to config app and add DE here, refresh DE appears here and it already works but it doesn't have any posts or posts have zero data with German language. But if we add new post, DE appears here. And if we fake fill all of those, save post, fingers crossed, but we do have the first post with German and also that works. So seven posts and only one of them with German language. So how to filter those in the home controller. And this is a counter argument to those who think that bigger database table is performance issues, not necessarily if you query only the things that you need. So you search where title locale, which is app get locale is not null. So where not null, then we query only the things that we need. So select and then we add array. So we need probably ID and title app get locale again or actually let's refactor that into a variable. So 
locale like this. So we select ID, title with locale, and full text with locale, latest, where not null title, again locale, like this. And just in case, let's also check where title is not empty, because it's not necessarily null. And now let's refresh the German page. So we have seven posts, right? Now we have only one post. For Spanish, we have seven posts. For English, we have seven posts. So now when we need to add the fourth language, let's try to do that. All we need to do is two things. PHP Artisan make migration add some lang. For example, Italian. Then we need to add those languages in here. So let's copy from here. Let's open Italian, paste here. Italian, Italian here, and let's add those in config app. We refresh and we have Italian. We need to run migrations, of course, PHP Artisan migrate. Okay, and if we click Italian, we have no posts yet, but if we want to add those, we have Italian here, we fill in the form, save post, and we have first Italian. So my overall point here is that you can make those database fields flexible enough so adding new language isn't that complex and when you select only what you need to select, performance issues are not that big. Maybe it's a problem of database structure being too big with one table and in theory it could affect performance but I think it's only for bigger portals like news portals with tens of thousands of articles and megabytes of database. And let's stop for this video. I was planning to show you two packages, how to make those translations in separate database tables and not in one. But I see that this video is already around 10 minutes and I'm trying to make those videos shorter on my channel, snackable, so to speak. So I will do part three, where we'll compare two different packages for multi-language translations for models. Stay tuned for part three, which is tomorrow. For those who haven't seen part one, the link is in the description below. And if you want to get notified of new daily videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified via email. And see you guys in other videos.